Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk, we gonna have fun. Hello. We be on fire. We I can't hear myself. Really? Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique House. This is your boy, ECEO, man. And I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none. You know my dad walk on. Man, just taking it easy, man. I, I hear you over there complaining about your sound. Yeah. No, because I could hear before you started touching Really? So. Really? I didn't touch it, though, man. I really didn't touch it. Man, it's just, hey, man, can you hear Nope. Uh, don't worry about it. You don't need to hear. I am the engineer. <laughs> <laughs> How you do? Uh, we, we're down here. Where we at? We're in New Orleans. In New Orleans, yes. man. You know, and, and, and to be honest with you, this is our first mm -hmm. uh, podcast in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. uh, we came down here years ago uh, yes. on, a, on two, two different occasions. The first time when I was pregnant. Yeah, with and, Shamaria. Mm -hmm. And the second time... We were just riding through with the kids. Showing the kids. The kids wanted to see New Orleans. But we were just passing through, so we stayed like at a hotel somewhere here. Not downtown, it was like outside. And we drove down and went, tried... A friend of mine is from New Orleans. Um, they told us to get beignets mm -hmm. and all of that, so mm -hmm. we came and got some of that. And that was it. And they loved the food. And then we left. So we didn't get to really just walk Aww. around and tour and do all of that. And get the real experience. And get the real experience. Yeah. We'll come wow. back next time. We'll, we'll make that happen. Man, mm -hmm. so guess what, man? We in Peaches, man, with Mr. Ronnie, man. It's going down, man. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm excited about Peaches it. Peaches Records. Store. Peaches Records, man. And, yeah. and this is and it's on Magazine, right? It's on Magazine. It is history. It is history it for is history nice. for history. I love the store. I do too. I've been I've been fascinated by it. When, I mean, I was like, it's it's a jewel. I'm like, don't touch it. You gotta be careful how you deal with it. I look at stuff different. No, I know it's good. You have the, you have the right eye because this store was built with the help of our people. You know, mm -hmm. because it's like if you can visualize the, the caterpillar going to the cocoon, mm. and this is what came out of our people. You know, this mm -hmm. is like. The local painters are here, the local candle makers, the local jewelers. You know, all the local people get a chance to have their stuff in here. And I'm very proud of that. Like to me, mm -hmm. that's a blessing for me that I can share that, and that we can work together, you know, and help elevate, give us a hand up, which we need. You know, we yeah. all need a hand up. We get a lot of handouts. But not a hand out. See, the best this thing that I handout. love about having a store, because we have a clothing store, and it's not always selling something, it's pe the, meet, the people exactly. you meet. Exactly. You understand. Being in yes. business. Yes. Being in business. Yeah. Um, That's I 100%. Yes. That's what I thrive on. Especially thrive when you have a good spirit. Yeah. And you can feel the other ones. And mm. you immediately, yeah. you like immediately connect. It's not the money. You don't care. At the end of the day, you feel good going home and saying, my God, that's a good encounter today. Mm -hmm. You know, we connected and have a blessing today. Beautiful. It's I know beautiful. people used to always yeah. tell me. I remember, I remember training an employee, and um, cust our customer came in, and I said, "Okay, watch and observe and see how I interact." And by the time I finished talking to the customer and they left, so I, I asked the employee. I said, "So, what did you think?" She was like, oh, that's your friend. You've known her for a while. I'm like, no, this is the first time I'm meeting her. I've <laughs> never met her before in my life. But just to treat each and every one that comes through the door like you've known them for years Absolutely. and have them feel welcome into your establishment. I mean, that's, I think that's the key. That's the key. That's what we're here for. Right. You know. Yeah, I agree 100%, and man. I, I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. Truly, because I feel like. We have so much separation division in this country and the world right now. You know, things are upside down. It's kind of crazy. And we're going to a very dark, deep period. And yeah. that's why, to me, in our power, we, unification is the key mm -hmm. to make this a, a whole, to make this whole. And I feel like, I feel like, you know, when we get dumped in the universe bare naked, we all come the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, we all are thrown into the earth, whether we are son of a king or son of a homeless would come in the same exact way because you know you had buddha was the son of a, a king or whatever, right mm -hmm. and christ was the son of a homeless basically because they didn't mm -hmm. have a place to live and but yet both of them looked at the world and said this is very sad we need to learn how to live with each other mm -hmm. yeah. and that's what message you've been trying to give us these prophets and people still don't get it you know right and i still feel like we need to in our journey 
as you just said about your your interaction and your business and how your employee thought you were you were friends with a person prior it soul connects and you feel something special about people like that y'all are one of those like mm -hmm. I, yeah i usually would say no i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> I really would. we just appreciate hey, you they will tell you said your spirit's really good I, I would normally say no 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 i'm not that's not what i do because love conquers all that's really the, exactly. the language exactly. the language of everything is yeah. love Such, yeah love is it. exactly without exactly. love we don't have anything. We don't have nothing. Yeah. I just, I, I enjoy the fact of, of being able to link with people. I, I mean, it's a, I, I believe. So I, how can you love a God whom you've not seen and hate your brother? You know? Exactly. So exactly. I, I've never seen the God I see I serve, but I see people who are supposed to be made in his image and mm. what I believe. So but I think we're all created in his in there. Yeah, right. you correct. Really so so uh, if you look in the mirror, you'll see him. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's I mean, it. that's not just a saying, you know? yeah it's so true but if you're not connected in a certain way in your spirit you you won't see that no yeah. you won't see you it. see what i mean so how long has this business been here we've been doing this since 1975. what wow. yeah. before i was born yeah. <laughs> a little bit before i was yeah. born <laughs> and so you know i feel blessed that to me and you started it yeah or it was a family business of okay because i saw a picture on the wall right here is that your mom that's my mom that's, that's what I, yeah, when, that's I, when, I, when I saw that, I'm like, oh, maybe your mom started the business. No. Okay. So, you resemble she, her. But she worked the business, too, you know, but yeah. she helped everyone, the whole family worked the business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the only reason we do this and like doing this is because I believe in the power of, power of music. Mm -hmm. And I believe that music heals mind, body, and soul. Mm -hmm. and there's nothing great, no greater healer than music. And what they say, if you sing, you play twice. I mean, you're, yeah, you're spraying twice, mm -hmm. right? They say that, and so I really believe that's important. That I've people, learned that more as I get older. How important music how is. How important music is, yeah. and how important what you say is. So mm -hmm. always be careful of what comes out of your mouth. Yes, absolutely. Because there's power in the tongue. Absolutely. It can kill, <laughs> and it can it can heal. Yeah, and it, and we do have to watch how we present it. Mm -hmm. So like I personally you know, try not to use as many words as possible and try to share the love mm -hmm. so they can feel it, you know? Exactly. And that's more important to me than anything because words are good, but how you actually feel from your heart deeply needs to be transmitted to the other person so they can feel it. Mm -hmm. So how did you start this, the, the, the business and why did you, I know you, you love the music and you, but why a record store back then? Well, you know, it was, it was easy, you know, like maybe just like there were bars in every corner, there were music stores in every corner. And okay. if you love music, you know, it just made sense to do it. And then the way I looked at it, like I said, I always looked at the power of music. To me, it's, it's the cheapest drug you're gonna get. You can go up, you can go down, you can control your mood. If you wanna be in China, you can put the music on like that. You know, there's just so much you can do with music. And, Many generations of survival was because of you know, music mm -hmm. kept them going, kept them pumped, gave them the strength to keep doing the next mile. I mean, like even when you work out, you listen to music. There's so much power in music. How hard was it to start this business? Though I know you said it was one in every corner, but how much did it cost to start a business? I'm thinking about it. the reason why I'm asking that because not to say you know someone might want to start a business like this somewhere you know because we viewed people all around the world can view this. And they might have that idea, like, I want to start a record store like this. How can I do it? Um, how much would it cost? I know it cost would be different back then what it is well, now. Absolutely. It's a it was a whole different thing. Back right. Then, you know, it was a whole different structure. Was it very expensive to start? Well, I mean, you had to have some money, but that wasn't that expensive to start. Okay. It wasn't. And it wasn't even the money. You, you know, for us, it was all about the love, you know, all okay. about. And also, you know, we have so many beautiful, talented artists, mm -hmm. you know, and it's important to be able, I think that this country, I feel like this country, we don't pay out artists or have respect for artists, you know. Until they pass away, then all of a sudden, exactly. they try to give them all the roses. Yeah, but that's not how we, No, we have to learn. Other countries do pay their artists money. Mm -hmm. That's why even New Orleans artists, they will go to Europe and wherever and they get and paid. make a lot of money. They don't get paid here like that. And that's one part of my, my campaign is to try to make sure people are how can it change anywhere. well we all have to do it within ourselves and we have, we have respect for it because like i said it's cheaper than a shrink you have a bad day you're about to go 
choke somebody, you drop the needle on your record player, it's immediately you're in a whole different world. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like immediately, fractional seconds. Mm -hmm. so like I say, it's the cheapest drug you're ever gonna get. My, to uh, me. my, I, I, I got some insight and I heard that uh, Mia X used to work for y'all. Yeah, she's like, she is like my daughter, honestly. <laughs> and so she lived with me too. She, her family. she lived with oh, you. Oh, wow. yeah, for while. You know, I mean, we always like share everything. You know, we we live together, honestly. All of the, the kids, you know, we all we're all the same. You wow. have a lot of kids because you call everybody <laughs> kids. <laughs> but it's because of the deep love I have for people that for people. So so when she was working with you, what sticks out to you um, just far as when she would work uh, at the store? Well, you know, like I said, it's a family business, and she's a, she has beautiful attributes. You know, she's always sweet and warm, and the knowledge of her journey in life, you know, it wasn't just simple, complicated journey. But um, if you ever did, you get a chance to meet her? No, no not yet. not, not so yet, but to. I will. You have to I will because she has Ella restaurants is, too, and uh, she, in she Dallas. overcame her. Her. It, Nina journey is, it's a long, hard journey, but it's a beautiful journey. Okay. From the standpoint of of life and the struggles of a young woman, you know, mm -hmm. in raising the children, and also like she, she writes her own material and all that. She's really, she's just a beautiful person inside out, like inside out, you know. And no matter, even when she was an international artist, and you know, she still humbly worked like the same like yeah, that's special person. so seriously I, it wasn't like you know there was no arrogance in it whatsoever so and she know, comes we'll, back and see you all the time well, we i um we share blessings daily okay that's good yeah with the children and we all share blessings daily because i believe in blessings because mm -hmm. to me we need to learn how to be unified in any way we can and right and to keep our units together so i you know that's I share good. blessings with KL, with Mr. Servan, of, with Bean, definitely, of course, me, of course, you know, me, <laughs> and all the children, you know, like right. we do that. And so, and then the sister, Ashley, she worked with us too. I mean, like I said, we're a whole family that work together to make this possible. Like, when I tell you that, visualize the caterpillar going into the cocoon, and this is the butterfly, it's, wow. that's exactly what it is. Because Beautiful. we're more of an institution than just a record store, you know, this could be, a record store could be on Amazon, you know what I mean? Right. Or one of these places, but we are in a institution where we try to give our people a chance to have a hand up. Mm -hmm. Hand know, up. A hand up so they can Beautiful. I learned about the Beautiful. history of Beautiful. music. Be. Because you can learn the history of music in this store, just being here with all of the the music that is in here. Yeah, you know what I mean? Carry pretty much all categories. But I want right. to I want to stay on Mia X for a second, just because I want to try to. I was I talking to the people around here. They say that she linked with, I guess, No Limit Camp Master P. Then when she was working for exactly the exactly. store. Yeah. I just want to just kind of the the things that you during that process knew about the situation and how it all well, like, unfolded. Master P was looking for artists back then. Master P was yes, and you remember they were very very young people, young mm. very yes. young. And uh, Mia, you know, Mia had so much, so much history, and so much talent, and uh, she helped put No Limit together. Honestly, wow, she did. You know, it's one day you have to interview her because it, it'll happen. You have to get her uh, story because her story is huge, and how she brought in all Fiend and all the guys over to No Limit. Well, she brought them into like Mystical no Limit. and Fiend. Yes, she, brought, she okay. brought them in, and then she helped all the way through. Um, helping them with their music and everything too. She, she did a lot, you know. Trying to just want her to tell the story. Okay. I don't want to be the one. Yeah, but I the just because her story is is phenomenal. so amazing. Yes, and so beautiful, and it's just so much more. It's there's a book in there. So what? There's a what, book, a beautiful book. But what you can tell is how um, she linked with Mel. No, Sapina? whenever, whenever she heard, whenever he reached out to her and um, found her. Did she call you and tell you what, what what was going on and how was her reaction and so forth? Well, you know, 
all that kind of stuff took place in the store because you know, okay. like, <laughs> yeah, this you know, was it. This was it. This way took place over there. So he so, came here and spoke yeah, because I mean, he brought his stuff over too when okay. he was working. You know, when he started. Yeah, because he wanted the tapes to be in the store. Exactly. So he oh, had to okay. come and meet yeah, her. Yeah, he had to come over and he yeah. he brought his you know all the. Yeah, See, I don't the, know. So he would, I'm he not, would, I'm he so would, he would have to bring CDs or yeah, either cassette right. tapes or because yeah. you had down south hustlers, you had exactly. a whole bunch mm-hmm. of yeah. music that he was pushing out. Ice Cream Man, all that stuff was. I remember the music because I'm a mu- I love the music. So right. oh yeah, for me too. I'm yeah. With it 100%. So during that time, he would have had to bring it over here. Like he brought like screwed up, clicking all of them in Houston. Like they would have to take their music around. Yeah. Uh, uh, UGK and them did. They was with Jive, so they 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 had a deal where the distribution was happening. But certain ones, when they was independent, would have to bring their music to the individual to get them to notice them. Okay. But you know, I'll be honest and tell you that. Our music, and especially the hip hop, back in the days, most of the stores weren't buying them because it would of the language and everything. That's correct. Mm-hmm. And so, we were one of the only stores, I would say, in the country, that like you know, Public Enemy would come over, or Flavor Flav and all that. They would stay, hang out with us. We have you know, help. they'll tell you the story if you ever talk to them because we help move this stuff. Same thing, Bumby and UGK and all of them. We help move this stuff. They stay in the store. So you've and met so, UGK. Well, I mean, I mean, our store was the center of everyone coming in. All, all the artists spent their time at the store. Wow. So I said it's more of an institute than it is just a record store. Wait. These artists all hung out daily, and the local artists all spent time hanging out daily, like from Manny Fresh to Joey D. I see Manny Fresh up, wearing the Peaches shirt. Yeah, because they grew up in the store. They're just like, they were my children, you know what I mean? Like, it's like I felt like I gave birth to these people because, like, you know, this is home when they they came in and they connected together and worked out together things. We should hold this. It's a beautiful city. Wow. Moses is very special. People are very, very kind to each other here. I mean, really. And so all these artists, you know, were helping each other out. And, you know, it was... I wish y'all were around to see that. Man, I, that's, why a, we, that's why we're we trying getting to get through all the you. stories through <laughs> you. No, it was a... It's a <laughs> you'd had to, you'd had to grateful. seen it, right? Yeah, I had to see it and feel it. I feel very grateful that it was all ha- possible. Because, you know, it was just, and like I said, the rest of the world wasn't ready for that type of music, even the bounce. But I'm so thankful. Here. I'm so thankful that you accepted that when no one else did to be well, able to, you know, give them that leg up. Well, the thing is, it was easy because these the kids were beautiful. I'm serious. Like I said, if you didn't know any better, you thought I'd be both of them. They were that beautiful, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity to share that with them, you know, and to do that. So we, so we worked together to get them where they needed to go. Like, even like say Baby and Cash Money, you know, hey. I actually had to take their music and send it to Universal for them because they were kids. They weren't even 21 years old back then. They were young kids. These people, remember, keep visualizing them back in the, those days they were very young kids. So, and then I had to go get the plane, buy their plane tickets for them to go to Universal to get the deal. You know, it was a journey here that, stems back from the beginning of how people are artists evolved so, mm-hmm. so you know so it's a beautiful thing yeah no i just i, I what, feel grateful i i was part of you know able to do this and then to know and how to, together, to do right i know exactly how to do it and what information you needed and to be able to teach them because again i'll go back to your spirit your spirit is so welcoming and you know like you, you don't hold anything back. You will, you will teach them. You will show them exactly how to do. Because you said they were young, so they need to know young. how to do yeah, it like to move even, out on themselves. Didn't even know how to write a check in. <laughs> right, right. It's it was beautiful. Tell but that's you. good. Yeah. Maybe they didn't I have, have nobody else to help them. I know. Like that's why I feel so blessed. I feel like God's given me an opportunity. To, you know, with this big family. Mm-hmm. Like I growing up, I wanted a large family, but I only had. Biologically, two children. Mm-hmm. So this was, you know, this is your large, my large children. Yes. Very large, and family. I'm very, 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 like, very yeah. connected. Like I said, I daily exchange blessings with KL and all of them daily. Like there's not a day that passes by that I don't get up in the morning and make sure, I, you know, so we know that we we stay connected and we stay together. And that we're gonna walk, the walk, holding hands, going where we're gonna go. It's, you know, it's powerful. Like, Explain anybody, to me. It helps me. That's honestly. Good. Explain to me this wall that I hear about that people were getting their lo- their paintings put on, and you would it was like a billboard. Yeah, yeah. I want to hear about that. You know, on the outside of the building, and just how that era was when when because it's an era that came that hip hop 
pretty much embraced for sure and you were able to provide for hip hop. Could you just give us a little insight on it? Well, you know, the old building on Gentilly Boulevard okay. had this big wall, which we, we used to lease out the wall, you know? And the radio stations part of that used to have it, you know, they'd, they would take the wall for a year or whatever, you know, and put their signs on. And then when children came around and we needed to do the marketing, the wall was the best place. Mm -hmm. And it was, people came all over the country looking at this wall because you get to see like Baby and Manny, you know, one of the, you know, you, the, it was good. It was beautiful because that's what better marketing can you have right. on a big wall like that, a big mural. Yeah. And it's continually changing. It was changing. Yes, all the different record labels wanted to, you know, get it. And one year, one year, baby decided to have it for a whole year. <laughs> <laughs> that's baby. You know what I mean? Yeah, he do it. He's big. baby. Yeah, he do a big boy. You know, and. That's fine, you know, that's what he wanted to do. <laughs> he just said, oh, I need it for a whole year. He, he approached and, you about it, he come talk to you? Well, but they grew up with me. I mean, they okay. went to the store every day. I mean, yeah. if they would, they used to say, you want to find cash money, go to Peaches, that's the office, you know. They'd, <laughs> they'd be playing the pinball, they were kids, yeah. playing the pinball machines and gambling, playing the pinball machines and having so much fun. And that's what, I mean, like, whole, all of them would, you know, would be there. Wow. The entire office. So he kept it a whole year. What was that the was that the time when? Uh, uh, what did he have on it for the probably, whole year? Probably, probably that the 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 one that they the, the hot boys. Yeah, he just changed it, you know. Whatever. Oh, he changed it. Oh, whatever they whatever were doing, he, whatever album was working at that whatever, time. But yeah, he said. But Master P was also, you know, always getting the wall too. But but he had it the longest, baby. No, well, I mean, he decided one year he's gonna take he's gonna it, for get it for the whole year. <laughs> yeah, that's baby, you know. He got he got to do it big. So my question but is, but I mean, just that's that's his personality. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so man. out of all of them, out of all of the kids that you knew that came into the store, because sometimes you can look at a kid and know that okay, you have the it factor, you're gonna be big. But was there any one of them who surprised you, who came in and you know you wasn't too sure about them, but they blew up over time? Well, you know, I can't say that very easily because you know. All of them was special. Oh, everyone was individual and everyone was special. And you know, if they want to work hard, it's easy to work with, you know, to work together when you see people that are like dying to, you know, to get there. It's mm -hmm. just, and it was, I think the unification made it possible personally, okay. you know. We had so much strength with each other like that. I, I, like I said, once again, I leave it, the man up there. That's right. And that's who made it possible. And I was blessed to have the opportunity to, you know, have these beautiful children. Mm -hmm. And they worked hard. This is team work made a dream. And Gloria, I think it said they worked. They worked hard. They worked hard. hard. They, they worked, worked their hard. They worked. Off. They weren't just sitting there. I mean, I'd call Master P when there's a new release. Even at twelve o'clock at night, he'd bring the stuff to me. He would deliver the stuff to me. You know, the stuff came to me immediately, and he would answer the phone even at twelve one o'clock in the morning. You know, that's the kind of situation with them. You have to know the history. Work ethics. You know, there were people who Street wanted business. to get these people worked, and it was a joy to help get them down where they need to go. It was a joy. So I felt privileged and blessed that we could work together like that. I mean, like mm -hmm. you get people that work that hard, that answer the phone 24 seven, you know, that's a lot. And they get the product to me right away. That's, and they would line up outside to get the product. Wow. So people would line up when the new releases came in and because they were, you know, putting stuff out left and right. And they would line up from all, all over to come get it. I know they anticipated those albums coming oh, out. Yeah. I did. And it's yeah. the numbers that got them the record deals. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know it. The first contract was like $30 million. It's the numbers of what we sold that made it possible for Right. Them. Yeah, yeah, that's, so, that's it. So, but I mean. No, go ahead. But don't forget to get me as interview. Oh, for you, sure. Yeah. yeah. You we got Kale and uh, maybe you Silk call coming her by and today. Tell her. Well, you got you gonna she gonna see him. She see Kale right. on there. She see Silk on there. She see we deal with Big Court. We deal with everybody. Well, Kale can reach me. That's right. He yeah, already. Anyways, because if Kale hadn't called, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have said. Oh, <laughs> I no. already know it. I know because it. I mean, you, know. you got to realize if I, I wouldn't have been down here if I hadn't talked to Kale because mm -hmm. he calls me too, and he called me and he was like such a soul. Yeah, and and I had told him when I first met Kale, I was like he gave me his number. He came by our store, and I was like I was like I called him one day. I was I don't even know why I called him, but. I, I was like, uh, I'm not gonna be calling you a lot, man. I know you're a busy man. He was like, No, nah, no, nah, you call me anytime. I wouldn't give you the number if I didn't want you to call me. <laughs> so I. Oh, then, but he's that type of. He's. I mean, he usually energy. doesn't. Yeah. yeah. He, he obviously felt the art. Yeah. Beautiful energy. Or, yeah. He's not. 
you know, he's a busy man too. He's very right? busy. And, and you know, much respect for him. I'm so in love with the man because he's doing what he needs to do and he's doing humbly. It's, it's beautiful. Exactly. Oh, beautiful, yeah. So Yeah, and so, the intensity of his power, what he does is beautiful. When I told him, I was like, it's our anniversary, man. I said, I'm probably, I said, well, he said, we in New Orleans. I say, I'll just come down there. And then, I, you know, that's we how we, we just drove down. Just, just by conversation. In 19 years. That was no. Congratulations. Thank you. That, that was no planning, no pre-planning. Like, oh, let me do the, it months ago. We didn't, we just, when I talked to him, I said, I will come. So we didn't know we was going to get to come by Peaches. We didn't know nothing. Yeah, he called me early in the morning. He goes, Mama. Someone needs to do a podcast. They need a place to do it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, no, man. It was so easy. I just it was respect when I when I hit the door. I felt it, man. That just the 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 I felt the history. Mm -hmm. That's what I felt. Well, you're supposed to because I'm telling you. That's what I felt. When you, when I say it's the butterfly coming out the cocoon, this is the butterfly. Yes. Yeah. You know, you can feel the energy in here. Yeah. And also keep in mind in this particular building, we took about ten years trying to find the building to move to after Katrina. You know, yeah, we got to talk about pre-Katrina and yeah. post-Katrina. Because that's why we no longer were in On, Chile. Uh, uh, right. Because we had it. And then people in New Orleans, Tower Records moved out. They pulled out and everything. And they didn't have a record store. So they called and asked, would you want to put a local record store in the quarter? Which is kind of an honor in a way because, you know, right. they don't usually ask a small mom and pop kind of store that's correct. to I, do that. That's so true. And so we did do that, but it was not very comfortable for our people because parking was a pain. Correct. You got booted, you know, ticketed, and all that kind of stuff in the quarter, and it's not comfortable for people. Yeah. And the artists, when they were trying to load and unload, they were going to take us and booted and all that. Aww. And so, you know, it was not a very exciting location. Right. And so we prayed. I prayed hard for like a long time. It took 10 years to find this building. Wow. But this building is very special. It's almost like a, used to be an old Woolworths. Okay. Okay. And um, in the 60s, the sit-ins, the civil rights sit-ins, took place in all the Woolworths stores. You know, the young kids, college kids, would go sit in the Woolworths. I didn't know that. Asking for yes. Mm -hmm. You know, asking to be served equally. Yeah. And so it was in the Woolworths that this took place. In New Orleans, this is the first sit-in right here that, on, that t on that counter. Wow. So it's really powerful, it's really beautiful. And you can feel that energy in here. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and they would have like meetings here quietly and Dr. Martin Luther King would have quiet meetings quietly in wow. here. Wow. But they don't talk about all that stuff anymore. Yeah. They don't right. want to discuss it for whatever reasons. Really? But Woolworths are the people, all closed, so it's not well, like they, it's... No, it's not that. It's, it's not to do with the, the political struggles, the civil okay. rights period, and all that kind of stuff. Those people that were there, the sit-ins from in the 60s, are still alive, and they tell that story quietly, you know? But they don't really have too much publicity for some reason. I don't mm. know quite what that is, but, but I mean, you know. But they, like wow. I said, those guys, are, those were kids then. Right. So they're still alive. Right. Because the so young I, lady that he told you that we interviewed down there in, in um, Birmingham. Birmingham, Alabama, she's at a civil rights center. So she was telling Put us soldiers. a lot of things about what they did. That's what her whole deal was about. Because she was a, when she was a little girl, the kids that got killed and bombed in, in that church. In the church. Those were her there. friends. And she, it was just by chance that she wasn't there that day. So it was stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We go and research, and we would go there and visit her all the time. God showed us favor with that woman. So we would always, she's a, what, about 75, eight, mm -hmm. 76. That makes about and sense. And she, yeah. Yeah, she would always, yeah, she would always, she would always embrace us. And, and she's so passionate about it. Oh, man. And so, I mean, that, that's what I said. That's probably the only, is that we, we've done that's a few true. businesses, but it hadn't been a lot. We usually at our place, of course, but mm -hmm. we, we usually go to, like, conferences. and oh, room, yeah. But, but, but because... Certain people, it's a it's a history, it's a feel you get. Exactly. Now, like you walk in and you can feel it. You can right. feel yeah. it. And you want to make sure it's special and the connection doesn't matter about, I know the listeners are going to love it, but at the end of the day, it really don't matter because Boss Talk 101 is here. Me and my wife this is, is here. This is our history. And we get to meet you, history. so that matters to me. And I, I really, I'm kind of weird like that. No, no, but you know, people, as you said about your employees mm -hmm. earlier, you know, people buy each other, you know, like, I mean, you feel some sense, of, you feel the power, the connection. Yeah. And it makes it easier to communicate. It's not even words. You feel like, okay, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful experience. Else. Yeah. 
And in here, there's a plaque back at the end of the wall. You'll see a plaque that we put up there that's describing a little bit about the, the dino, you know. The really? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, make sure you, you can pick it Definitely. Out. Yeah. I need to take a picture of that. Yeah, so then there's a big plaque, a real okay. plaque. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even notice it. I want to uh, just, uh, you said, I'm a big Pimp C fan. So that was UGK, Huge. PMC. They all stayed at the store every That's day. That's what, yeah, yeah. yeah. They I, were very I, close I'll, friends with Baby and them, too. Correct, correct. So they spent all that time just sitting there. We should, you could have visualized the store because the, all these kids just stayed there after school. Andy Fresh and Gregory D and all those guys just came in the space. They hung out. This is the you know, way they came and hung out. They really. love music. Of course, you know. They like, loved it because and, they still do it to this day. Mm -hmm. Mystical, all of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And, but you know these, they all they all t did positive things in my world. I mean, they were, yeah, they were positive. They went in the right direction. And coming from nothing, that's a whole lot. Exactly. Being I say able that to all take, the time. being able to take, like you know, so the way I, we have a structured, you know, a certain percentage goes to the St. Jude's mission to help the help of homeless. Course, and, you of know, course, of course. Because I always believe that I like St. Jude's. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. I always believe that. Um, you gotta like work with your communities, you know, and strengthen the community because that's important. Very important. And in doing that, you also like, and if you give them a hand up, you, you can keep the crime down. You have to work like that, you know, you have mm -hmm. to keep the crime down. It's, nobody wants to live that type of life, but unless you offer them opportunities, what do you expect from people for survival? You so, so you gotta like, that's right. That's what percentage of what I take in here from since 1975, we give, Give that Give, back. We have to. That's where they get support, you know. Yeah. I'm not very, I'm not the person that can do the support part by giving them, you know, that. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, people have problems, but drug problems, alcohol, whatever. But these places, like the St. Jude's, they work the, with it, they help right. them out. They, you know, they give them all the help they need. And that's really, I think, a good thing to do. So right. we worked on that. So we're blessed that we can try to do some things to help out, you know. You know, do you just, still have um, local artists or even any artists who are newer in the game who come here um, just as how the masterpiece used to come just to try to gain information just to try to learn you know learn about the industry they no, oh yeah artists come all the time remember with the digital world the it's game different. has been changed right and so I don't really know exactly where they're do, going or directing right now directions mm -hmm. because the digital world has messed up that mm -hmm. and it's different, you know, they're not, and also the kids are so consumed with computers and games, they're in a whole different world. And try to, they need to try to understand the real game of how to get where they need to go. Cause we used to always say, you have to know where you're coming from before you know Absolutely. where you have to go. Exactly. And we've had a lot of artists who come on our show and really talk about the newer artists not really trying to get in tap with the older artists to learn certain things to be able to move forward. They just be like, oh, th they're old. They can't tell me anything. 100%. Just, 100%. So I, sure. I don't know why they don't. They need to. Because I, th I don't quite understand that either. But I hope that, you know, they'll it come changed. to the realization and they'll understand that you have to, you know, the history, the history of how they got there is the most important thing, you know. With these kids, I mean, Master P and Baby and them, they came from nothing, you know? Yeah. But they evolved because they were willing to work hard and they were willing to listen and they wanted they wanted to do this together, you know? It wasn't all about just, oh, my sippy by himself or baby by himself. It's the whole family, you know? Slim would come through as well. Oh, Slim, of course. <laughs> they didn't go nowhere without each other, those two brothers. Those two brothers mm -hmm. that oh, stayed together? Me, they, they had the, like I said, they lived in the store with me every day. So they always know? was together. Oh, they were always together. Of course, you, Baby knee slim. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a certain story that you remember of them being in here that you can share? That they did something they did? There's so many stories. <laughs> Tell me one. Tell me one that's funny or something that's, that you think you can tell. Oh, no. I mean, like, you know, it was a daily activity having them around. One of the nicest things I'll see about them is like, and like I said, remember, they came from nothing, you know? So they would all, all the art, the whole entourage, the whole roster would be there. And of course, one car, they all had to get in this one car, you know, <laughs> to get around. That's how, you know, that's how, that's that's how, how it started, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? They had nothing and there was not a good, the car was not in really good shape or anything. <laughs> like Remember that? And he'd have to send my son with a tow truck to go help, you know, <laughs> and help out and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like, 
You just have to live the life to understand. Because it was family. It so was if family. something happened with them, it happened with you. Yeah, so we, we tried, you know, well, everyone worked together. Correct. Everyone. I give everyone credit for jumping in and say, okay, let's go see what's going on in here. Wow. You know, those are the old days. So it's just, it's like raising children and mm -hmm. y'all have children. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, you know. I want to ask you about. To be involved. To be involved. But the, the barcodes, like, like the, the parental discretion codes that you had to have on the CD once that time came in when, when the when the vocal music and all that, uh, you know, it, it was being challenged. Were there any times when they was threatening you guys as all a business? Time. That's to say, as all a business. Wow. They come over and pick the stuff up to get exactly. out, confiscate it. Uh -uh. We'd have to go to like Baton yes. Rouge to go to, um, to it, was, it was quite painful. So yeah. It was quite it's a lot painful. of hassle. Well, it's, it's just, I mean, that's just what, you know, it and was, now it was a change. It was times changing, mm. and I think that I believe I know. I don't think I believe that since with Massapi and, and Cash Money, when they evolved, they actually changed the game. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, instead of slinging out of the trunk of your car, you got into the real game of money, real money, and so that's like first time. You know, that's a big opportunity that came through for everyone in the country. You know, instead of just being supporting your family monthly. You're able to like have a life, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is that was a beautiful part for me mm -hmm. to be able to get there. What about? And that's a blessing. For, I'm serious. That's a blessing. For very there. big blessing. It's so I'm up there because I don't take credit for all that because you know we all worked collectively. Exactly. And it made it possible. So I give you know I give them the glory for making that path clear, you know, for them to understand. Like you said, look at the younger. The young kids are not listening. They're not. Listening. They're not paying attention, and then they're not going. They don't anywhere. know the history. Yeah. And you need to. Well, you you gotta said, stay but connected. the statement you made is quite clear. You need you need to know where you come from. You have right. to know where you come yeah. from. I, I wanted to ask you about uh, like like did you ever get a chance to meet Soldier Slim? Of course. <laughs> How was Soldier <laughs> Slim? They live in the neighborhood, you know what I mean? Yeah. They all live in the neighborhood and uh Philip Fraser is his is his stepdad. Okay. And his mom, you know, they are, they live down not that far away. And I'm very, very close to them, you know, because... We interviewed the sister yesterday. We did. Yeah. We interviewed the sister. Peaches. 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 We yes. interviewed her yesterday. She's a sweetheart. She loves you. She, oh, she, I adore her. Before KL even told us to come here... She told us She to. told us to come here. Yeah, I adore her. She was like, I could call you. You need to go over Peaches. She she have a setup in the back. She let us use it sometime. Oh, yeah. This was because her and KL never talked yesterday. Right. Right. So this was just her yeah. heart pouring out to this place, man. I mean... She's like, like she's gonna help you no those matter what. Families grew up. Those families grew up with me. Like her dad, okay, Philip Fraser, is the head of Rebirth Brass Band. Okay, you know that's pretty big. The Rebirth Brass Band is the biggest, most recognized brass band. Yeah, today even. She you know, the songs like her "Feel Like Fucking It Up," "Do yeah, What You yeah, Want," yeah. "Castle." That's all her dad's stuff, you know. And he, they started together when they were in high school with Kermit Ruffin. Phil okay, Fraser and Kermit Ruffin. Yeah, yeah. You know they were the, the leaders and they. They worked really hard. They worked every day. They gigged every day. Well, Bob Ruffin went a little bit for, on his own of because, course. you know, he had the kind of the Satchmo voice. Yeah, he did. Like the reincarnated of Satchmo came through, you know. So he did his own thing. But Philip kept that band going, and they played everywhere. And now Philip's another one. I would call him any time of day. He always answered the phone, always gave me answers, always, you know, it was a beautiful thing. And we were able to sell their music more than anyone else in the country because, wow. you know, like, that's our music. Yeah, that's that's That is correct. our music, and that music, back in the days, all our hip hop and all the stuff that we are dealing and talking about now, yeah, that's the stuff that kept people um, starving or worried yeah. about food or kept us happy, you know? This music was, and brass band stuff is a happy music. Yeah, no, and you're, I call it considered medicinal, like it's truly medicinal. It definitely medicinal. It's therapeutic, right? Exactly. The minute you put it on, even though you're hungry and you're tired. Needs to get you there. I mean, like it immediately. Pulled, yeah, yeah. Man. Yes. So she lived, you know, with the parents. I mean, she's beautiful, beautiful, and I'm very proud of her because she's excelled. Yeah, she's yeah. excelled. The, the the music down here is different. They had a bounce sound one while. They still that's their core sound. Many fresh, one of the dopest artists just like that ever. You know, for me, produced that bounce sound. Yes. You know what I mean? Like this. Yes. It, it pulled rolling, you, with yeah, rolling, it rolled yes. you in, man. It was just nice. Oh, I, at my age, I can tell you, I'm, I love it. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously. Of course, maybe he was smart. Every single track he was laying, he would bring it, 
play at the store and see the audience, you know, reaction to it. Oh yeah, he would yeah. always do that. Oh yeah, because you know there was no way we did not know every song mm. or every you know thing. <laughs> There's no way because he you know he made sure he just marketed. There were no computers or anything to do it. Yeah, I mean yeah. You, had to, you know like these guys worked very very hard. They don't have the help of what we have today. They didn't have no yeah. computers to do that. I mean they had to really. So I mean, it was beautiful all how this thing bloomed and emerged and the work they did and got to give them credit. They all worked very hard. Wow, man. Just, you know, just a P, delight to hear. He was a little bit, you know, he, he was a little bit more of a visionary, you know? Yeah. He really, that's why he is who, who he is today even. You know, he's got an amazing vision and he was willing, he was willing, you know, to do this. Yeah, yeah, Pete was always, Absolutely. always seemed like a business mind. Absolutely. He tells a story about a young, his parents, yeah. giving, his grandparent giving him $10,000 a month. One of his grandparents gave him $10,000 and he went to LA and he got him a store. Exactly. A, 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 you hear this story. And he played basketball, remember? And he played yeah. basketball. Yes. So this guy was unique. So they're a little bit more in, in, enlightened. Did you ever have a chance, and this may have been before the music, because it was so early on, Kevin Miller, his brother that passed away, was that before the music? Or do you even remember? No, I remember all of them, you know? Okay. Yeah. Kevin Miller was alive, and, and during the time the music was circulating? I mean, I'm trying to figure out exactly. Like, you know, my dates, remember, I'm old lady. Correct. My dates all, like, get all mixed up. So I wouldn't be answering that very, very, very well. Very well. Yeah. I, I, because I'm supposed like to get said, silk. If I get silk, I can ask yeah, him. Exactly. And, um... Who's Kevin Miller? That was that the was brother his, their that brother that passed died. that yeah. died. Oh, okay. Yeah. And his children come and visit, you know. Oh really? Children. He did have children. I didn't know that. They, I definitely didn't know that. They come to visit. That's nice, man. But they're 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 pretty close though, you know. C's children, all of them they're fairly close. They're pretty close. And they're very they're close, but they're also very kind, you know, kind. Good they've done Good. they've done well. I mean, the kids have done something you know that's a whole thing that people don't talk about the and kids. think about the kids have to come up in a in a now they have to readjust and put themselves in a situation where they can't even move around like others used to move no, around. exactly so it's a different lifestyle for exactly. them so that, they have to be well, something. Like going to school they've gone to school and done you know got educated and doing something positive and i always see Birdman, son i'd be like this dude is extra quiet like my son like my son, I talk a lot, but my sons, they ain't gonna do no talking. But her, his son always, Birdman's son, always seemed quiet to me when I would see him, he's a young man. And I just, like I said, I always, I did good as far as with people from Louisiana. I always loved the people from Louisiana. I, I would always What's say What's your that. spirit though? That's what it is, your spirit. I, I, I would do good with them every time. I don't, I mean, you know, that. Don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, there's people that may not like me, but I'm gonna still love them anyway. But at the end of the day, it's like, man, you know. They were welcoming you. They were yes. very welcoming. But, you know, a lot of, th remember this is where a lot of things started here. You might have some family, <laughs> your roots here. here. Yeah. And we feel it, you know. Yeah. You, you, gotta, you gotta look at it Well, like I, I was born five miles from Louisiana. I'm, I'm like, in, on the Texas side. Right. Texas side. So I'm, I'm right there. Uh, Cattle Lake is what separated me and Louisiana, and Cattle Lake run in Louisiana. And people have to like go places to make money, though. So you know, and, yeah. and also stories are left, you know, behind because struggle is real, and you know they went play wherever they could do a little work. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like you know you probably your souls and spirits here, so we feel it. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, man. that's a good thing though. You want to be, you want to feel that. You want to feel universal like that. That's it. That's it. So. The deal, the most striking deal. I know. I heard you say thirty million earlier because I believe that's what Birdman and them got from Universal when Correct. they first. Correct. But so did P though. That was B, P got the same thing. As far as I remember, I, I didn't know I mean, that. He's an old lady with all my bad memories. <laughs> yes, I thought but, it wasn't he with Priority Records or something. Yeah, but still, you but know. he still had his dealings with. Well, you know, yeah, he, I mean, like I said, P paid attention. He learned, you know. He, he learned a lot. Oh yeah, he was first. He was early on. Absolutely. And he, you know, he was you doing need a, You need a movie on your life. Man, a movie book. on the whole movement. On well, yeah, you need to put something together because something together. people need to know the journey so they can maybe hopefully benefit from it. Right. Yeah. You know, or learn to see what, how it evolved. At least that information should be there. Because, history. Because these people, the kids, these kids worked so hard and it needs to be exposed, you know. Right. Because it was like, wasn't like magic. It was an overnight thing. It was hard work that went into it. A lot of but the thing is that you see people don't ever realize the importance of learning about your history until you're older mm -hmm. and then you're like well i wish i had sat down with 
my grandmother, my great grandmother, exactly. whoever, and just um, record it. Because back then, growing up, we didn't have recorders where you would just sit unless you were rich, right? To sit totally. down and totally. you know and record people. Right. But right now, you can just take your phone, yeah, and just ask the right questions and be like, okay. What happened in when you were this age and mm -hmm. so forth, so that they can now take that information and pass it on to their kids and teach their kids. Because right. there's a gap in our generation where you don't know that much information of how your what your grandparents went through, what your mama went through, your dad went so through, true, and so though. forth. It is true. You don't know because yeah. we didn't ask as kids. Because I remember I was I'd fought with that. I had my grandmother at home and. But I was like, mm, no, I want to go outside and play. I want to do, it's all about, when you're a kid, it's all about you. You want to have fun. You want to do this. You want to do that. Yeah. But as you get older, I'm like, you know what? I wish I did ask these questions. I wish I, I could hear the stories about all the cousins and all the this yeah. and that, what you went through. What Do you remember right. your grandfather or your father going through? You know what That's I mean? That's so true. So it's, true. It's a big gap. I just, I, I, like I said, the one thing we can say that's positive is that when you see like platforms like this and when we start asking the in-depth questions and talking to the people who really was a part of it, that is a, a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. That is a, a part of us utilizing the resources for the times that has changed to try to connect with the people who have the answers. Now, my mother, of course, um, I didn't get to meet my grandmothers. They lived in Seattle, Washington uh, when she passed away. But I, I, the thing you got, you got to understand is my uncle, who I had, I would sit in the back of our house in the back of my garage and I would just sit there and talk to him for hours, just asking all kind of questions about her because I never got to meet her because she passed before I was born. But do you remember all the answers that he gave you? I, of the ones that are core, the ones that I want to be able to deliver to my kids if they want to know, then yeah, you know, uh, and then of course my mother, I know, <laughs> you know, with my mother, um, I'm definitely one that can give them the answer that, but you think our kids are interested in that? Not as children, but if you have these things recorded and have it somewhere where when they get older, they can pull it out. Because the one thing, you know, growing up, we have pictures of our parents, grandparents. Would, what would you give to be able to have a recording of their voice? To hear that voice is like you could actually see them in front of you hearing them you know what i mean but you don't have that all you have is pictures you can hear from what you remember but it's a difference when you just see them compared to when you can hear them you know what oh, i mean of course boss talk doing that right now with you your kids will be able to see you for a long time because it'll be that is so true right <laughs> no it's good though you know they can be when they get they older can see they you. can see you right so they and, and hear what you have to say and all that it's really good yeah we did we did kind of like but of course the struggle has been real, okay? Yeah, they, again, people people struggle really hard to survive and take care of their children. There's so many single parents, and you know, that's where the grandparents are taking care of the children. The struggle has been real. Even at this point in time in the in this country, for sure, struggle's real. People are still trying to, you know, get where they need to go. And that's why the separation has not been good for us because only in unification are we gonna be able to attain what we need to attain. It's so important to, you know, be unified. It's very important. Is it yeah. going to change? That's what's going to make the changes, our, us being unified, you know. We need to be connected. It's going to give us that strength to get our voice back. Correct. We don't know, we no longer have a voice. We lost our voice because we are so separated. That is so true. We're so busy worrying about this rights and that right and this right. Well, at the end of the day, we're going to the same place. Mm, that's you know? true. Regardless of whether we're the child of a king or a child of homeless, we're going the same, same place. Route. That's right. So that's why I say, like, I believe we all need to hold hands and get the journey, go together. Mm -hmm. That's why I do the I send the blessings and share blessings. Yeah. Because I want to. I am so. a firm believer of that. It's like important to me. I know you say you love music, so I would love to get your top three artists of all time, dead or alive, <laughs> any genre. Any genre. That's not easy. I, I know, because you that have such easy. a wide we catalog. We ask that question on every show. So I'm no, so curious to so, know. It, it, it's so hard. That's okay. Narrow it down. I top will tell three. you, though, my way, the way I am, mm -hmm. to me, music is um, it's a matter of the mood. The mood I have. I listen to all kinds of music. I listen to the so this uh, top so the rap, mood that you have it right would now it would it would it, change it yeah it, it changes because I can I listen to I listen to the metal I listen to gangster rap I really do because you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm 
I know why I listen to it because I, I like the beats and everything. I was about I'm to more think... of a beat person oh, okay. than the words. Okay, that's her. I am. Me too. Yes, I. The beats get me, and I, I. Then I listen to words later on. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's how I am. I'm just one of those. I can tell by a beat. This mm -hmm. is going to make it. This is right. going to be a hit. I, the, the beats get me. So like I listen to every okay, category so of music. So it's if you're so hard. happy, if you're happy, who do you listen to? I mean, I might listen to. Let's see. I might listen to a little bit of Louis and Ella. Mm -hmm. You know, on a, like a nice Sunday, because that's such a healer. Or I might want to get up and listen to the brass band. Yeah, okay. I listen to all the brass band music for the day. You know, I mean, I listen to all categories of music. Like, so if you're angry, well, then I need to get something to soothe me down. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you listen to? You know. I gotta, I gotta listen to something that's gonna calm me down. Like Sometimes who? Ellen Louie will do that. Okay. Because you look at this two, they came from nothing. And when you're listening to for the music, that's why the record play is beautiful. Because there's the album cover and you see Ellen Louie on it, right? Louie came from nothing. It was basically raised in a pasta home and Ellen didn't have anything either. But these two people brought music and joy to the entire world. People come from other countries they know this, their music because they know the power of what it does to you. And you look at them and say, those days, they lived a very hard life, you know, back then. And to do what they did together and bring joy to the world, it's huge. I mean, you can't, you can't, you can feel it. You're listening to it, it just totally comes you down and you say, I think I have a problem, mm -hmm. get off of it. I'm not having a problem. Look what they had to go through to even, mm -hmm. you know. That's yeah, so true. So because, what? you know, their life was a danger lots of times too. Yeah. You what know, mood do you have to be in to listen to gangster rap? I don't really need much of a mood for that. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's music is, you know, sometimes it changes my mood just by listening to some things. And who is your but favorite like, gangster rap? Well, that would be hard. That'd be hard. That'd be hard. <laughs> that would be hard. That'd be hard. Seriously. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'll listen to a little bit of Tupac. I'll listen to, you know, I mean, like, I didn't, I was, I had the blessing of being around all of it, you know? Right. Did so, you Tupac meet ever came down? Yeah, that's what Ooh, I was, baby. Tupac. Tupac. Yes, he came down. So you met him? Not, I hate to say that I met him because I mean, he came, you know, they, they breeze in and breeze out. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like, you know, they make their appearance. So the easy is the same way. Easy. You know, pull the truck out the door, come in, you know, and then shortly after that, he passed away. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I, what so, about, I, I wanted to ask about I, I had the blessings of all those people coming through because mm -hmm. back then no one was accepting the music. No. Or mm -hmm. the lifestyle, all the, the lifestyle. clothing including our people, right? right? Of course. Our right. people, I mean, I had people here that say, you know, I like to shop in your store, but you know, I can't, you got all those thugs hanging on there, I'm not coming. Yeah. I said, well, you want your gospel and your blues and your jazz? Have it. I know these kids, don't worry about it, just come over. Yeah. They'll be okay, they're not, they're not thugs, they're not they're gonna not kill dangerous. you. They're not dangerous. They're not dangerous. And that's how when people talk. Did they come in still? Reluctantly, all the ladies are like, oh, my children <laughs> can't come in here. I'm like, oh my God. Of course, when they got the record deals, and all this money. Now they want to oh, be part of it. Oh, now they want to be part of it. <laughs> oh, you think you tell baby, I've got, all, I, I've got these fancy cars I want to move and all. And that mess to be me like, oh, it was a whole different scene. They once changed they, their tune once they seen that. That's how life then is it so It may be fun. sad. Right. It's just people. It people may be are, people, sad to see that people People are not real. Yes. In certain ways, people can be fake. They, they don't, they, it's fake love. It's not real. And, mm -hmm. and, and they, they, they just running after something that's shiny. And, and and it draws them. Yeah. Well, I really because think if they that lost the money, they would go right back to the people. Would go right back to treating them the same way as how they used to treat them. Well, I think it's because of like a lack of awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, a lot of us we have beautiful people in this in this country, in the universe too. It's not that they're bad people. They are misinformed. They're misguided, and they don't know who the right person in charge of everything is. That's you good. Know? That's good. And that's what it's all about, the fact that you don't know where you come from, and you don't know why, I mean, you're busy accumulating all these sparkles and, and all this stuff, but you don't even know why you're accumulating them. Right. And, and we're not given, we're not given a piece of, of deed saying, this is your universe. You, they're not giving us anything like that. You gotta remember, it's a one-way ticket. A lot of things are passed ride. down to, somebody told me a story one day, and I never thought about it like this. It's just like, say, your great-grandmother used to love to cook chicken in a certain pan. And um, so her daughter started cooking it in the same pan because she thought that that's how it's supposed to be done. Nobody ever turned around and asked grandma, like, why do you cook that in that pan? If 
Exactly. They found out, they realized that the only reason they cooked in that pan because the handle broke off of the other one that she was supposed to cook it in. So that's the reason why she started doing it in that. But it started going down generation to generation thinking that's really how it's supposed to be. But not realizing. Exactly. That's you didn't I'm saying. ask. People are like people misinformed. Misinformed. And then, you know, this is why we need to change it by being who we are mm -hmm. and realizing that we need to stay unified and we need to share the love, you know, because that's what it's all about. Are like, you born and raised here? No, I wasn't. I'm raised here. I'm alive, but I wasn't born here. Yeah, because you don't really have a New Orleans accent. That's why, of course. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Where were you born? Where were you born? Well, no, the born has nothing to do with it because it won't matter. But I, I did go to high school in New York for a minute. Okay. And so that's... That, that's what it is, and that's mostly, what it was. you know, like I talk to people all over the world, mm -hmm. and so your your vocals change when you're deal, dealing with different people. people mm -hmm. And you'll find that you lose your accent talking to people, mm -hmm. you know, because you're talking to all these people that come through. It's you're so right because sometimes you can be talking to somebody from a, and all of a sudden your accent starts to like gravitate to their exactly. accent. <laughs> exactly. Now you said it. That's exactly what happens to me. That's what's going on let, with me. You know. Let me ask you about BG. BG. Uh, we met BG yes. uh, in Vegas. He's Did, sweet. Yeah. Long time ago? Long time, Long time ago. Before he got locked up. Of course. I mean, like, BG's, BG's record, Chopper City, is the Chopper record City. I sent to Universal to get that contract. Mm. Really? Yes. BG and was the first one to go with Birdman. He was the first one. He's a, he was a very young kid. Yeah. Okay? But BG's record, that, that record is the one that started creating the whole thing. That's right. That was in those numbers, okay? It's too bad that he had these problems, yeah. mm -hmm. which eliminated him being on time to go to all, you know Universal. Right. They said sometimes you had to be there at some time, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and there were much difficulties. And his mom um, and I are very, very close, like you know, okay, because um, she also she also helped my help me my mom before she passed. Okay, she yeah, she helped she, you with your mother. Yeah, she, yeah. So we're very, very close family. Okay. She and I, be, in fact, she and I still still spend blessings every day too okay awesome. because you know that's our family you know mm -hmm. yeah so be just like my own my own children too mm -hmm. but it's just that his situation is creating a problem you know it's like i think he's about to come home he should be coming home but you know it's too bad he had to serve that time that's right because he didn't do anything bad mm -hmm. yeah you know it's his problem how many years has it been it's about 12 it's only it's 12, like, I think it's about 15 15 years yeah, yeah. Okay. But anyways, he shouldn't have been there. That's not right. a place for him. It doesn't help him. It doesn't help him. No. So like, my heart hurts bad when I think about him. But he might have, as I was talking to her, Miss Carol, he might have kept him alive. You that's know? what I say. Because, you know, you never know. You might be sitting in front of somebody that's a, a walking miracle. Exactly. I'm just being real. That's so funny because there's another guy named Hot Boy West that's been on our show. Yeah. And he said the same thing. He went to prison for... Um, how many years did he go well, for? He, it wasn't he, that he's, long. He's only 27 and he did 11 years. 11 years, years and he's only 27. He's only 27 and he's done 11 years of his life in prison. And he said if it wasn't for that, he prison saved his he life. Probably would have crashed out. Crashed That's what out, they call died, it. so forth. Yeah. And when we posted that clip on social media, there's so many people underneath had said that that's them as well because prison saved their life. But like then, of course, you have the people views. who are haters and feel that because you say something like that, you're glorifying prison, but you're not because you're not. a lot of people need that sit-down time because no matter how much you have... Because the thing I can't understand, being a parent or being a mom, you hear some of these um, adults come on here and, um, and it. say... It's the camera. And say, um, I love my mom, I love my mom. And I would do anything for my mom. I would not hurt my mom. But you same one will turn around and crush her heart by doing something that will end you up in prison when you know that she needs you to help, whether pay the bills, take care of the family, do the different things. But you love your mom so much. You know what I mean? And I just could not understand that. But prison do save a lot of lives, whereas when the mom can't tell you, don't do this, and you would listen because you love her so much because of habitual ways prison will make you because you're not in society that has all of these distractions it'll make you sit down you yeah. know what i mean i i had totally understand because basically it's like a an enforced vacation where you have to stop and think a little bit you know mm -hmm. but i don't think that the prison systems that we have are good because it doesn't really rehabilitate anyone and i think they need to make changes on that you can't treat people like animals and just throw them in cages 
you know, we need to like find ways to once a month give them the handoff they need, you know. And there are some places that have done pretty well with some of the guys. Mm -hmm. While they were there, they've gone to school and, you know, done. And counseling. And, and and counseling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying, but, but now you, individuals even own prisons. So that's right. I think they need to check out, check that whole and evaluate what do we need for the humans, you know? How do we give them respect? Respect is what they need. Most important ingredient in life for a human is respect. Mm -hmm. They need love and respect. But those two ingredients, they evolve to who they are. You know? That's so true. I politics to, I, run everything, though. It runs, politics runs everything. No, nah, because it, it, you can say politics. It, it's like, let's get down to the like, like the individual, like you just said, that, that may own them, the one who's pretty much owning them. They have to make money. Uh, you got to understand, if no one goes to prison, the money is not as lucrative. It, it is a business. It's right. a business. It's a business. It's a business. That's when I said politics, I meant yeah. with the money and the yeah. business and all of that. No, that's, you're perfectly right. It's a big business. I mean, it's, big money. Honest, that's what they need to really see. Re how do we do to reevaluate a, a thing for human dignity? You know, it's important to give you give a person love and dignity. They might not have it at home either. That's why they were. What, they are what they are. That's what why they criminals. What about C. Murder? He's been gone forever. Yes. And uh, I know you met him. I know you've seen he's him here. He's my heart. He, he's would, my heart. He, he was a native that loved to stay here. So No, he's my heart, though. He, he's the realest one. And I'm sorry that he's where he is, you know, like because he shouldn't be there either. Will my, he ever come work. out? Working on it, you know, it's costing a lot of money. So yeah. all, once again, it's a big money business. I hate to say that. Same thing with Mac, you know. It was a big money business. If you ever get a chance, you could possibly get a chance to interview him, okay? Okay. okay. Even though he's there, I just try to connect and see, you know, if we can get her together, because depending on how the prison systems are. We yeah. would love to. But I'll have to, t it'll take me a minute to That's try fine. to talk, to, you know, to see how they will do that. But Mac is snapped back, and you can get KL to bring Mac. Okay. Because Max served a long time too, remember? Yeah, he did. They, I seen and him he's on. Back he, now. He back now. He's I seen back him now. on. I seen Wonderful him on a couple guy. of shows. Since he was a kid, you need to. You need to talk, you need to talk with him because Max spent some time with C, so he can give you some more information. Yeah, that so that C, that's good. You can call him and have him come meet you over here whenever. Okay. Max doesn't live that far away. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, and KL can yeah. connect. Yeah. You want yeah. to get KL to connect for you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because he's coming he'll in get, a minute. He can get, he'll get mayor and he'll get Max to come. Yeah. Yeah, I, I you want to get those two. The history is something else, man. Just that's to what you need, though. You know, my I only showed a lot. You are the mother I, of yeah, to everybody. exactly. I, you know, but you need to hear their journey, hear their story. You, that's more important to me than anything else. It is me not glorifying it. I want them to get, you know, right. this story told. Yeah, you know, that's the most important thing to it's me. It's very important. Because it actually, actually people look at it and and to be honest with you, it helps a lot of people to know that they can make it through as well. Exactly. The because some is, people to do that much time and then come home. Yes. And th that lets another person know that hey man, I can make it through. Exactly. I I, I, I can get out. I, I may make it home. It, it seemed like everything was all else failing, but I heard this podcast and now this give me a Absolutely. Yeah. strength. To say okay, That's I can strength. do this too. Yeah. That's right. That's why you want to talk to someone like that. Max spent a long, 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 long time and. If you want to hear a story and you want to be able to like share that, it's so important to share that with others. How long? Uh, well, he's, 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 I think, was his sentence 27 years? 27 years. years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but he's out now. So, you, how many years did he serve though? Long time though. Long, long time. time. Do it. And I did, we did, we had a magazine back in the days so that we, we just, we had back in, just like a long time ago. And so, actually got a chance to interview them while they're in prison. Mac, and see mother we had a chance to do that so now that mac is back have gail connect y'all okay. i'll do it you want to get that's that's very powerful to know you know and did you get a chance to, to do manny fresh not, not yet. yet i'll sure do. i wish i could i wish he'd come on this thing because he's one of my big i, I love well, this call thing. ckl might be able to connect that yeah he know him well i do know no, that he's a, the family's all like i said this is what the beautiful thing everyone See, your mom together. you should be able to pick up the phone and say she come know. over here right now kl is more the <laughs> connector but kl but you know because you got to make them understand why they're doing this yeah, yeah, yeah. And so KL can make it connect. Okay. Can yeah. give you that, that hope. I think, like I said, I, I was with the people. I, I'm funny. When God gave me something, I value it. So God gave me you. I don't be tripping. I know God has got everything lined out for us. Mm -hmm. Oh, always. You have so, to, we have so, to have that belief in hope, Yeah, you know? so when I come down here, 
if I just came and God gave me just an interview with you, I would be so pleased because I know God is real. I don't even have to trip. I know that's what he needed me to do. So all the other people, yeah, the like I said, the shiny thing looks great. Don't get me wrong. But there's something about really connecting to your purpose and walking in it. The time that, and place that it doesn't matter. Oh, I know exactly it it doesn't matter to me yeah. uh, about who comes. Right. It just matters to me about who comes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. God right. gave me and, who he gave me yeah. and I'm so and happy. It's gonna about evolve. It. And I do want them to tell you because I think that story might help someone else. That's right. exactly like, what I it really, does. I really, really want that. And that's know? what we use our mics for. You know, we some people ask us use what is this that. for? And I remember one time um he was asking, he's like who would be the biggest person you would like to interview? You know, and everybody went around the board and said who they would love to interview. That would be their crown and glory. And for me, it would be that person who walks in the door to say, this interview helped me. I was about to commit suicide or about to exactly. this, that, whatever. Exactly. And th- exactly. I heard this and it changed my life. Exactly. That would be my crown and glory. This is why know. I'm suggesting these people. Yeah, correct. You know, even, even interviewing so does Sim's mother, because mm-hmm. Kale probably can connect that possibility. I asked Peaches yesterday. She then what well, mm-hmm. did I ask Peaches? The mom will be nice. I don't, I, did I mention it? You mentioned it. Yeah. yeah you did. Can, you asked. She'll be. Who did I ask? I asked she'll somebody. She'll be willing to come do I don't it. Know who you asked. She'll be willing to come do it. She's usually very nice. She's had a few health problems. Let's see if you can get her. You know, come in. We interviewed a gentleman named Paco. Mm-hmm. He was friends with greatness. Do you you know who greatness is? I know Paco. No greatness. What's his, his full name? name? Uh, he was. He did it. Uh, he, uh, Something greatness. It was. was a, it, this was just in 2017. So this wasn't. He, long, he long died. Time ago. Um, he got killed at the Waffle, uh, Waffle House. House um, that one morning. But he was a good. But, he was a good artist, man. Mm-hmm. I knew him because I, I followed his music, and he was from here. Uh, his name was uh, Young Greatness. Young Greatness. Yeah, but he did a great job, man. I just always looked. I was wanting to meet his parents. That's what. That's why you brought yeah, that up. Yeah, because that's what I was you were like, Because that was the first thing I said. Man, I love to talk. Because his his run wasn't a long run, and I just don't don't want it, nobody to forget him. That's good. No, it's good. You understand? Yeah, what I'm of doing? course. So if I but could do, talk to the mom, I, that would have been great. And then also like connect with BJ's mother. That would be nice. Like like those are the things. But also BG. She's BG's, working so that I find out if I can get her to come talk to y'all. Okay, yeah. that'd be good. I always just like I said, I'm always open to whoever God give me. Yeah. And we'll drive back down here because well, we, we, it's we, only we, six hours. Yeah, I'll fly. Um, I'll fly. <laughs> yeah, I mean I'll I'll have to ask Miss yeah. Cynthia if she wants she should come do that because you should. Because then she can tell you all this what the story, story then yeah. about our son and the early days of a son. You want to hear all that too. Yeah. You know, and you want to hear all the early because you know, Soldier Sim and BG and Kale and all of those guys, just children that work together yeah. to do what they did. I think, you know? I think Kale told me that. He told me that. Kale told me this story about Birdman, Master P, Soldier Slim, and two other guys. He was producing Body Body, and they was all freestyling to it at his house. Mm-hmm. It's, it's every day, as I said, we lived like that, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, like we all live together. It's like and I thought whereas, that was like wow. We live together as one, so like people don't understand this community. That's how how we are. You know, when we say we all want, we basically feel like that. Yeah, this is this, this is something you can't make up. There's no way you could have ever knew that this was going to happen. No, it had to be organically done. Absolutely, you know, man, it's the grace of the man up there, though. It's always all the man, grace Peaches of the man. is a great place of business. Um, I love the layout, man. I never knew about KL. The one turned me on to it. He was like, "You gotta go over there." That that's. He was like, yeah, she's, "That's where you want to go." Then everybody's saying peaches, so God pushes you where you need to be. Well, this is their home, so that's why. Exactly. And they built it. We built it like that. We built it where people have a home to come to, so they they can do what they need to do with dignity. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we need that. This is the reason why this store was important to me, is because. It's a home we all need. Home they can come to do, you know, their record deals, whatever they need done. Yeah. You know, get in here and do their in stores. You know, I, I sound scan for them and get them on billboard. Man. So like all these things are like tools they can, you know, they like my store at Gentile is a tiny little store, but this is huge. But this gives them that opportunity when they're ready. How big was the to. store when you first opened it? Because it, it had to be. I mean, this is ten thousand square feet. This of course, is a huge store. Yeah. It wasn't just a typical, typical little, you know, small. Yes, yeah, it's not a big. The first one was small. It had to be. Yeah, it was small. Of course, yeah, of course. Yeah. Saying, <laughs> but I always wanted the biggest store because 
everyone hung up, hung out at the store, and we needed a place to like something to perform a stage to perform, and you know, a place to get the work done. Mm-hmm. God, you know, so you had live performances there at your store. Yeah, we did, but it had a lot of people that come to it too. Wow. And we had to kind of do it outside because there's so many people. So would many come. people, right? Yeah, it was, it was quite. A, but so that's what. And you don't is, have any recordings from any of that. You know, nobody taped it, videotaped it. No, because I mean, it became like a festival. Right. You know, you have. A, it was basically in the parking lot kind of thing. You know, people, there where you get <laughs> space. It's a whole different thing. You know, people just had to work. Because now. You just had to be there. Now it's easier. Right. Wow. If they want to do it, you know. But they're a little older now, so there's a difference. They're raising kids. Vision's different. If you get a chance to talk to PNC and them, try to get them to talk to you too. Yeah, working You know, on. with Big Boy and all them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That because, yeah. yeah. Okay, oh. KL knows up here. Those KL oh, can yeah. connect you. Kale laid time. back. He, 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 he's he's a connected But he's in the middle. Everybody. But the thing is, like, that's family. That's what families here right. are so, you know, there's no malice with each other. Not we help each other. It's so beautiful. So That's why I'm feeling very blessed. I <laughs> know <laughs> so that's right. Say. Yeah. That's like a gift. I mean, where yeah. can you go? It's like a little small taste of heaven, You honestly. have a gift uh, to be able to keep this bridge going for mm-hmm. as long as you have with these people that are connecting with each other. The grace of God. We'll See what I mean? You, that is a gift because we'll give the glory. a lot of people couldn't have done this. There's no way. You have to have something inside of you to keep this going. Most important green is love. Yeah. So you got to have love. Love makes everything evolve, you know. It's love. The key ingredient is love. How Man. is business with the way how the industry changed where people are not doing CDs as much anymore. People, Everything is going internet-based, downloading streams, all of that. How is business where, you know, that is concerned? Well, now it's changing into the vinyls. That's right. I noticed it, it's coming it's back. All, it's all the vinyls now. It's coming back. I Meaning it's back. Everything's on vinyl now. Right. So you saw Charm the business tables started are back. coming. Well, the thing is they came to the understanding that, that people need physical copies. People need something to touch. You know, and you need you need to be able to read the line and notes. You need you need that, and you need to have a clearer, better sound and all. Invest in a record player, and then you'll you'll be able to understand yeah, that. No, yeah. but my daughter, my daughter, my daughter she wanted it. one. She's, she's smart. She wanted one uh, two years ago, and I got her one. But I got her a little. Cause you know how kids are. I want this now, and then they don't ever use it. So I got her a little one from Walmart. You know, she played it for a while, but then it stopped working, and she was just like, you know. No, no, that's that's like getting her Fisher Price. My generation they had these little record players all children had. Mm-hmm. It was called Fisher Price, right? right. No, you need to get a real system, mm-hmm. and that makes a difference because that yeah. it just y- y'all enjoy it. And the nice thing about the record player, you know, with the digital world and all, everyone got into all their headphones into their world, mm-hmm. the computers and the games and all. There's no connecting, right? right? But the record player to me, it's like back in the days, families would sit in the on a, the dinner at night mm-hmm. and they would have a bowl of soup and they would. T- t- and they would talk. Well, the record play is that kind of thing. It's like, you'll say, hey guys, have you heard the Tupac? And, then, and someone else comes up with something else. You know, it just, it helps connect all different types of music. And it's good, it opens the door. We had one growing up back in Jamaica. Um, but mine used to be, you know, the big ones that the had houses, those yeah. speakers yeah. and you turn the top up yeah. and yeah. So we had that and we had a huge con- collection of vinyl, everything from Sammy Davis Jr. to Dean Martin to, you know, Jamaican music to, to, I mean, just everything. My parents collected like a huge array. So when my father had passed, when my mom moved up here, it's like, I wanted to carry all of those vinyls with me, but I couldn't carry it. It was too much. It was too much. And I, it hurt my heart to leave that behind because I knew that number one, vinyls was coming back, but with it's just a good, race. Exactly. But it's not, that's too, not too late to get a good turntable and to incorporate that in your house. Because it opens the doors for everyone. Seriously, you'll see that. Is it, is it there's a, a real reason why it's back. Is, a, is there a prior, like, if you get an uh, album that is had nobody else got, that puts more value to it. Oh, yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Collect so do you too. able? Are you able to understand that algorithm? Being that you're in this industry, you have to understand that. Sure, that coll- people are collecting. What is the mm-hmm. most uh, sought out of a collection that you possess? We, you know, because I carry all different categories of music and I have a lot of things like that, you know, so it depends on what the demand is, but deep down collectors are what keep keeping the business alive mm-hmm. too, because these collectors are like, they, they've been doing it for a long time. Correct. Like collecting. But keep in mind though, you know, the Europeans and Asians never quit pressing vinyl. Mm-hmm. 
the Americans, like for 30 years, stopped pressing vinyl, and they got into this digital world and all that stuff. And so our, comp our uh, you know, our... Um, Collector's eye? No. Compare. All our pressing plants are, have been dormant and right. can't be used. So for a while, so they had to send everything to Europe to get pressed out. Mm -hmm. And now they're getting machines and they're doing some of it, you know, pressing it again. But the machines are so overworked now, they can't keep up with the demand. Mm -hmm. They don't have enough machines. And so people are waiting like eight months or a year to get their product pressed out. Wow. But the sound is very different. It sounds better. And you know, it's lifetime because it's there. As long as you take care of it. Exactly. It's not, it's a good thing. It's, there's a real good thing about it. Well, I hope we did done you justice. I hope uh, you enjoyed yourself. Yeah, man. We had, I had a blast, okay? This was this was a great interview for me because, like I said, the history that you entail here in New Orleans, man. Hey, man, I'm loving it. You know what I mean? And so I I, I can't make this up. I'm, I had a heck of a time. And we're going to be hanging out for a little while. Um, did we, we cover everything? Yes. Is there oh, anything yeah, else no. you want I mean, to you're say? Good. No, you're good. You're good. I'm glad. But, but, you know, the thing is, I feel that you're doing a very nice thing, a very good thing, because the powerful part of it is maybe you touch somebody's life. Mm -hmm. That's it. And you can and you can change that even if it's just one person, that'll make me happy, you know. Yeah. Yes, and, and the fact that you things. care enough to want to do this, and on your own dime, basically. Yes. Exactly. That's a, that's a big thing, you know. You're yes. not like you're not you hustling trying to make a dollar. Right. You're doing this because you want to share the love, and I, I have to embrace that. Wow. And Thank accept you. that because you know I understand what that is like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we do things like that too, and nobody really gets it sometimes no because they think oh well and she's trying to make a dollar i'm like no mm -hmm. it's not about the money if it was i wouldn't be doing this exactly right? exactly not, there's not much money in this business you get a lot of joy but you know the joy is what i go for the love at the end of the day yeah and that's i do so joy conquers everything exactly like, money is not everything no and if i don't feel good at the end of the night why why well, you get up in the morning get to work what's the point mm -hmm. that's so, so true yeah so y'all have to Thank Eleven, you very so good. much for opening your doors to us, letting well, us letting us hang out at Peaches, <laughs> well, man. Well, hang out because, you know, because we do it. Yeah, they're coming. Yeah, they're Thank coming. you so much for coming on Boss Talk 101. What a boss's talk. There we are. Well, I love y'all so much. <laughs>